Welcome. In this episode, we're going to take you to our top five camps that we visited in South Australia. Within these top five camps, there should be at least one camp to suit everyone, from culturally significant country right to the super popular beach areas. From easy access that you can just drive your van up close to town to remote bush camping areas. We cover it all in just five camps. They're our pick for SA. But more importantly than these five camps, you must stay around to the end of this video where we revisit an environmental and political issue we discovered why we were in South Australia. Even if you have to skip the middle part of this video, don't miss the end. Starting at number five is Cal, located on the Eyre Peninsula. The low cost community RV park is situated walking distance to town, which has two hotels, a local IGA, fantastic butcher and a variety of other shops. The main attraction is the abundance of local oysters, along with crabbing off the pier drives along nearby beaches and fishing and it's the home of the black stump and some silo art. Wednesday nights is spit roast night at the Franklin Harbour Hotel. The RV park is for self-contained vehicles only. There's no power but does have a water point. The dump point you'll find in town and if the RV park doesn't suit there's two caravan parks to choose from because you don't want to miss cow. Number four is Paluby Beach, again on the Air Peninsula. It's 24 kilometers from Streaky Bay. This low cost camp of $10 a night offers toilets only. There's no power and there's no shower. It is dog friendly though. If you're lucky enough to jag yourself a shelter, you can sit by and watch people swimming, fishing, canoeing and snorkeling. Go for a stroll along the beach or a wander up through the dunes and if you get the tides right, jump on over to Eba Island. We made some long time friends there and I'm sure most people do. And you'll never get sick of the sunsets, they're just amazing.
Number three, Chambers Gorge. It is a remote bush camp located in a not so visited part of the Flinders Ranges. You can tell that it is culturally significant as soon as you enter the place, even before you reach the numerous rock carvings and the fresh water pools. The walk through Chambers Gorge itself is amazing and it's a must do if you go there, along with the rock carvings up the side creek. Both creeks are seasonal and the entrance track in travels a fair distance down the creek so it will be different every year. You need a high clearance four wheel drive and it's hard work if you take in an off road van. The gorge and the surrounding area is located on private property but with public access. Make sure you allow about one day to check out the gorge, the rock carvings and just absorb the serenity of the area. Number two, Shingles Beach. It's located at Point Lowry on the Spencer Gulf. I love this place. It's super scenic, right on the water. There's no chance of sand in your tent or van here because it's all pebbles. There is a distinctive geological formation which consists of a long line of pebbles like a dune that formed in the Ice Age. Not the best for fishing, because I've been snorkeling and there's not that many, but it is still a lovely area. There's plenty of squid and razor fish about. The camp has no facilities, but there is a reasonably local dump point. It is two wheel drive access, but be extremely careful if it rains because you definitely need a four-wheel drive with mud tyres to get out if that happens. Or you can just wait another week. Don't forget to jump onto our website or our socials and order your calendar, stubby holder, beanie or sticker. And remember, we can send it with a message to a loved one if that's what you prefer. Number one, our favourite, Baskin Well Conservation Park.
offering remote bush camping and plenty of space. Baskin Well Conservation Park is 32,000 hectares and was previously a sheep station. This is evident when you start exploring. Rich with history and no one else around, we were able to take our time and check out the old buildings, relics and other artifacts. We even found a geocache. If you're after peace and quiet, we would highly recommend visiting Bascom Well. The access is limited, but it's well worth the drive. St Kilda Beach in South Australia sticks in our minds for a different reason. Not because it was the top camp, but because we discovered the mangroves there were dying. When we queried this phenomenon in October of 2020, we were told, please share our concerns. Because we had released our video, in early January this year, a member of the Save the Mangrove Alliance contacted us to let us know that they had created a petition to save the mangroves. So hopefully we've helped a bit and their petition will help a lot more. Looks lovely in there. Descriptions on the walls. But alas, we cannot enter. Ooh, it looks terrible. They've got a pollution issue. So what happened was the lakes were used for salt production. They were decommissioned and let dry out years ago. They then refilled the lakes because they started production again. Unfortunately, the lake lining had deteriorated, which allowed the super concentrated salt to leak through into the neighboring mangrove area. When we noticed, it was about 10 hectares. That was in early October, 2020. It took until March the year later before they were actively pursuing the problem and emptied the salt lakes. By then, 190 hectares of mangroves were affected and dying from the excess salt. I 
I reckon it's just trapped. It doesn't seem to go up and down anymore. I wonder what it's to do with that pink lake. Poor mangroves. We're all dying. Apparently no one cares. So we've been told. If you look at the water, it's just a murky, soapy looking, stinky bog. Looks like old bath water. Caravan grey water. Unfortunately, they haven't solved the problem. The excess salt in the mangroves is now crystallizing and it's still killing them further. So for more information, and if you can help, check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. If you want a reminder, hit the bell. And remember, we always love a thumbs up.